Yeah, and then I'll say, oh, hey, what's up, brother? Welcome. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's up, man? How you doing? Doing good. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah. I uh, was, uh, so my neighbor actually brought up a conversation. It's kind of ironic that we're meeting today because my neighbor was asking me about the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification. So right. I'm glad that we're meeting here today. Um, but uh, hey, welcome everybody. Joe Larson with the Larson Group here at eXp Realty. We're here in Jacksonville Beach today uh, with our friend Jamie Holmes from Movement Mortgage. Hello, everyone. So, Jamie, let's get right into it, buddy. What is yeah. the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification, and why is it important to do right. that up front? Yeah, so, I mean, Renee read a great question, and I feel that is one of the most prevalent questions I get all the time. Yeah. Like, what is the difference between getting pre-qualified, pre-approval, what's the difference, and does it really matter? Yeah. Right, so, when you're talking about a pre-qualification, you mean that a person is either filling out an application online, or speaking with a lender like myself, taking the application so we can review their credit, mm -hmm. right? The, the credit report is pretty much the biggest domino in the upfront process to yeah. get pre-qualified or pre-approved for a mortgage. Okay. So a pre-qualification, we pulled your credit, we're listening to what you're telling me, you're telling me what your income is, I'm plugging it in so I can get your debt to income ratio in the system correct, mm -hmm. and then we're putting a loan scenario together for you. Okay. So again, all we did was pull your credit, and I'm listening to what you're telling me to put yeah. in the information, and I'm praying to the gods that your information is correct. So you're receiving verbal information on the pre-qualification. And then on the pre-approval side, you're actually receiving the physical and tangible information. Correct. So that's the difference, right? So when I say, like, I want to get you pre-approved, yeah. I want to take an application, review your credit, but when we go, we need to go a little bit deeper. Right, I okay. want to see your pay stubs. Okay, you tell me you make X amount per hour or salary. Yeah, I want to see a pay stub just to verify that. So you're just not giving money two hundred thousand no. dollars to Johnny Jones. Yeah, who, who, you, you don't want to send out that loaded gun. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, 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 I'm an optimist. I believe most people are honest people, but sometimes they may be just a little mistaken sure. when they're saying how much money they make. So, right? People exaggerate. People slightly. Okay. Sometimes they exaggerate. So what you want to do is you want to be a little more thorough, right? Like yeah. if I'm sending someone out to buy a home and I'm saying a pre-approval letter, I want them to know that that letter I send is worth its weight in gold. Yeah. It means that, listen, I spoke to Jamie. Yeah. He sa I sent him my bank statements, my tax returns, my pay stubs. He's reviewed everything. He knows that for this home, I can be approved for okay. it. And so tell me a little bit more like, Obviously, that's important now to get a pre-approval rather sure. than a pre-qualification because now you're actually validating information up front before you even get under contract. Right. So the likelihood of you actually getting a loan approval and closing on your house is much higher than as if you were just had a general pre-qualification. Would you agree? 100%. So tell us um, you know, some of your top three reasons, again, of why it is super important to get a pre-approval. I mean, the number one thing for me, like why you want to get pre-approved, is just that you don't want to get emotionally attached to a property, get under contract, and then find out that you can't actually get approved for it, right? And so, I mean, a lot of America is married, right? Or you have to snake another man or woman, doesn't matter. But somebody is gonna to want to buy that house. Yeah. And they don't want to have any issues after you're under contract. Yeah. And we're trying to be peace of mind. Right, so you want to get pre approved, meaning again, we want to review your credit, we want to see your documentations, okay? We want to make sure that you are fully ready and prepared to go to buy a house. So, so planning up front is key to uh, planning and preparation, right? It's mm -hmm. key, obviously. So, number one, and here's, here's one of the biggest things that I, I hear a lot is client says, Well, I don't want to get my credit pulled, yeah, right? My credit's good, why is that? I know it's good. I feel there's a very big fear out there that it's going to destroy their credit scores, okay. but it's not really the case. Okay. And so on the lending side, we need to know all three credit scores yeah. because a loan is actually qualified off that mid credit score. So what I try to tell clients is, listen, even if you say we're not going to be looking to buy till three months from now, that's great. Yeah. Why don't we make sure that there's no issues on your credit now so when it is time to buy, we're that much more prepared, mm -hmm. right? Nobody wants to say, all right, I don't want to get my credit pulled. I'm just going to wait. 
then they find something like or maybe their spouse does. Yeah. So it's kind of sometimes I, again I think that's more the driver a lot of times. Like you right? said, when you're married, the, the, she rules the roost. Yeah. Your she, whomever, your partner. Yeah. All I'm saying is that someone's gonna be like, I like this house. We need to make an offer. You need to make it happen. That's call it. the lender. So then you call the lender, and then he pulls your credit and says, Whoa, were you aware of these collections? Did you know about this, that, or another? Yeah. And now you're already under the gun because yeah. your significant other or you wants to make an offer, and you're not prepared to make that offer. Okay. So and someone says, Why? Like, you want to be prepared up front. Yeah. You got to. It's just doing your due diligence. This is the biggest investment of your life. Mm-hmm. Why would you not want to make sure that all the you know all the eyes are dotted, T's are crossed up front to alleviate that pain and that worry? If you get a contract, you can't get approved down the road. So planning, preparation, and and even strategy, right? Because it's important to have that up front. Sure. You and I were talking about off camera how much of a healthy market that we're in here right. in the Greater Jacksonville area, and we were talking about multiple offer situations. Sure. So another reason possibly is strategy, right? So you have all that stuff up front. Yeah, I mean, you want to know, clients always ask, can I get approved for this amount? And the next question is, well, what's the highest I can get approved for? <laughs> yeah. So obviously my job is to send multiple scenarios and make sure all their needs are being taken care of. Yeah. That's what you want to know. So you know, hey, listen, we're going to a multiple offer. The house is at 250, could go up to 265. I spoke to Jamie. I remember that we're good up to 285 even on yeah. this property because he ran all the scenarios for me. So we're not worried about that. Yeah. But you got to be prepared. So when it comes game time, you can fully execute yeah. and get. I mean, get those keys. I mean, it makes total sense. And you talk about, you know, if a house is listed at 250 and and the buyer is pre-approved for 260, and that's maybe what they want to offer. Yeah. You know, then you can run into a potential appraisal. Uh, issue down the road depending on what comes in so let's talk about that a little it's bit at, at, at another video sure but um, all good information man that's that's good so, so again but the, the, the end, end thing is you, you want to get pre-approved yeah I mean especially if you are self-employed yes I can't say that enough if you are a self-employed borrower I understand the world understands yeah. that you may be writing off a little bit of your income so let real quick 30 seconds or less Talk to us about why that's important. Uh, if you are a 1099 or self-employed. You gotta talk, so if you're self-employed, what you really wanna have is your most recent two years of business and personal tax returns, all schedules, everything ready for a loan officer to review and cash flow. To come up with that strategy or game plan, perhaps on what income you want to claim the following tax year to help you get approved for the loan amount that you are wanting, right? But we gotta know what those tax returns look like right now, so hey, Here's what your income looks like right now. Yeah. What can we do a year from now to, again, plan forward? Planning. You don't want to ever just realize, like, oh, we can't get approved because of what's on your tax returns. Yeah. You, just, you just want to get pre-approved. Just let someone review them. Get a game plan together. It'll make everybody's life easier, right? You, the client, uh, the lender, the realtor, just all parties involved. It just makes the process so much easier and so much smoother, right? Yeah. So, rock on, man. Dude, super valuable information. Always. Thank you so much. Man. It's always fun to meet with you. Yeah. So cool. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Listen, if you need Jamie's information, all of his information is in the description and content uh, below the video. Uh, we are here to help you and happy to answer any questions that you might uh, might have. You got Jamie's cell phone number, so you can call him or text him anytime as Please well do. as me. So rock on, man. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.